years ago, especially when I opened this, we opened the studio, <clears throat> I would get people come in and they would say, "Oh, do you do functional training?" And I would say, "No, I don't." And I'd be about to go into my pitch as to why, how silly it is, and how stupid human tricks it is, and they'd say, "Oh, I really wanted to do that." So I said, "Well, that's that's not working," you know, lecturing people on lecturing people on something they asked about that's not working. So I decided, you know what, I've 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 used the inflatable ball and I've used the Bosu and I've used some of these other functional g gadgets in the physical therapy clinic. Let me just have them here so I can just say yes to that. So the person would come in and say, oh, do you do functional training? Yes, I do. There's the medicine ball. There's the, the rope. There's this. And they'd say, oh, okay. And then you move on to the next thing. So it became less of a deal breaker on the, on the sort of like the intake interview. Now, the fact of the matter is I wasn't going to let them dictate what they did in the gym anyway. If they came in and insist on throwing the medicine ball or slamming a weight, we, we, we cleared that up right away. But the, the way, I guess, the fitness media, the wellness media works, functional training is almost synonymous with exercise and fitness anyway. So the person coming in off the street inquiring may have seen it. They may not even know what they're asking about. But they just think it's part of it's part of the scene, and so they have to include it. So, so part of it is that just very, I saw it as being a, a, an obstacle to getting new clients to be against functional training. The other part of it is some of it actually has some value. And up until this year, I was trying, to, I was figuring out the value sort of on a um, haphazard basis, <clears throat> like I would use a Swiss ball to try to figure out what what was unique about that, that was relatively safe to do, but actually did something constructive. Or the body blades, or the heavy rope, um, the BOSU. <clears throat> and just because I have them, like if I only do one thing with them, that's fine. If it's one appropriate thing. You know, no one is saying you have to do everything on a BOSU. No one is saying you have to do the stupid stuff from functional training. Um, this year I took a, a continuing ed course that was eight hours of functional training, and most of it was, was pretty bad. But the, the introduction where they talk about prime movers versus muscles that stabilize the joint, the anatomy and biomechanics of that, as far as I can tell from the stuff I've read for the other books and the other, the other presentations, is pretty solid. Now, they, they then go very awry when they turn into, you know, let me th throw the medicine ball over your head, sprint after it, slam it to the floor, sprint back, stop short as the, as the exercise everyone should be working to, right? So somewhere between very sound anatomy and biomechanics and what they have people doing in a gym, there's this major leap in logic mm. to where the things they're doing in the gym is actually putting you in those, those vulnerable positions you're trying to avoid, you know? You're, you're loading the spine in flexion, you're twisting the spine, um, you're just stringing exercises together with no rest and calling it high intensity interval training, even though the form is terrible, even though it's wearing out your spinal erectors, um, you know, they're just administering a beating in the name of functional training. And this is like, the, you know, <coughs> what, what was happening to you when you were starting out training with resistance training and doing the extreme ranges, nobody knew any different, but it's like, most people don't know any different when they go into a gym and perform the functional That's movements right. nowadays. That's right. And now there's no excuse to know any different. The, you know, uh, re, re, unlike when I did moment arm exercise, when I had to go with these really heavy-duty academic kinesiology biomechanics texts, now they have biomechanics for dummies and kinesiology for dummies and anatomy for dummies. And having flipped through them, the stuff is pretty good, at least for the level we needed at to deal with people in a gym. Because let's face it, lifting heavy things in a gym is not brain surgery. Mm. It is a gross movement. It's a gross movement that can go really wrong. Um, so the information on how to do it better is kind of readily available. Just to throw up your hands and say, oh, that's functional training, that's crap, I don't do that. I'm not sure what purpose that serves.